Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers! Happy Thursday! I hope everybody's doing good today. So I want to come on here and do an update on the little Tay situation. So let's go ahead and break this down. Um, I found out about her around the same time everybody else did. This was back in 2018. And I remember watching this nine-year-old. Uh, she coined herself the youngest flexor in the world. And she would just go around flexing and stunting on me and everybody on social media. And we were all a bunch of broke-ass bitches. And, you know, we don't be having nothing like little Tay. And so these videos would go viral. Many influencers and rappers um, would crowd around her and try to get clout off of her and things like that. And so when I made my first video on Tay, for me as a parent, I found it really disturbing. One, she was young. So who's in charge of these videos? Who is filming this? And where is she getting access to these penthouse suites and all this money and these cars to flex in? Brand new Ferrari. Y'all haven't seen this car in your lives. I'm out here flexing and all y'all broke-ass haters. I got a $350,000 chain. Y'all haven't seen this in your lives. I'm richer than all y'all broke-ass haters. Y'all grown-ass men. This Lil Tay, let me tell y'all something. This shit costs more to your rent. My toilet costs more to your rent. Everything in my bathroom costs more to your rent. And see, it is my closet. Everything in here would be designer. Gucci, Louis, Versace. And also, when I was six years old, I lived in Atlanta, and I was broke as hell. But one day I woke up, I said to myself, I ain't going to be broke no more. So I got up, and I started working hard, moving bricks, and now we be living in the hill. See that view? Y'all don't have that view. And I be holding your mama's rent. And so eventually... It made rounds around the internet, then it became mainstream, and the mainstream media ended up doing an interview with her mother, where her mother basically, you know, blamed the brother and said that, you know, Tay is loved and protected and, you know, all this nonsense. Being two million followers on Instagram. How would you respond to critics who would say, oh, you're just going to try to profit off your daughter now? No one's forcing me to do this. That's not true that she wants to make money off of me. And what about those homes she claims to own? GMA talked to mom Angie's former boss at a Vancouver real estate firm who told us Little Tay filmed using his car and some of his properties for sale, all without his approval. I didn't shoot in anyone else's house. You didn't shoot in anyone else's house? Just like... No one has proof that I did. And who's behind the shocking content on Little Tay's social media accounts? My mom doesn't run social media accounts. I use my own Instagram. These images will live on and follow you for the rest of your life. Is a nine-year-old really capable of making this kind of decision? This is my decision. I'm happy with what I'm doing. I'm going to have my name on one of these stars one day. We were surprised to find a precocious, soft-spoken nine-year-old whose mom says she's a straight-A student. YouTube stars like Jake Paul are either co-opting her act or trashing it. Snoop Dogg even accusing her 16-year-old brother of coaching her. A lot of people are going to say this and that. We just we just keep going. What are all the Then shortly after that, a video leaked online. I'm not sure who released it, but in that video it showed little Tay being coached by her brother Jason. And you could tell, you know, they are going over these lines with her. She's getting frustrated. Y'all go ahead and check this out. No, wait. Go back. Go back and say like, no, you, you, you broke, broke ass bitch. You still, you, you out here, you are out here like with your irrelevant ass. You, you making a video on me? Like, bitch, I'm way more irrelevant than you. You're trying to be relevant and you're trying to be like me. Mommy, stop. Lil Tay be popping on YouTube right now. No, 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 no. What do you do? You need to be like more ignorant. You have to be like, ooh, Lil Tay, Lil Tay out here. Wait, what did he say again? You still irrelevant, like I said last time. 
<sighs> what, what do I say? I'm a trend. Tra I'm a trend maker, and you a trend follower. You a little. Right. So you guys just saw that video. So then around this time, there started to be, you know, more of an investigation. There was a lot of backlash. Her mom ended up getting fired from her job because her mom was a realtor. And so the owner ended up firing her once he found out that the mother was using his properties to front and stunt for her daughter. And then soon her father, you know, quote unquote, swept in like the hero to go get custody of little Tay. Little Tay and her brother have different fathers. And so he, they had a bitter custody battle and he ended up winning. He took little Tay. I believe he's from Canada. So he took little Tay back there. And then on the internet, on her page, there were claims of abuse from the father, and, you know, they were upset that Tay was gone. Recap. Last weekend, Lil Tay's Instagram came back to life and featured a couple posts claiming that Tay suffered from alleged mental and physical abuse from her father, Christopher John Hope. There were even clips of Tay crying. I'm not going... Following the activity on Tay's account, Chris Hope, who's a lawyer in Vancouver, sent a cease and desist to Instagram and the posts were taken down. The alleged hacker claimed that Chris court ordered Lil Tay to live with him in June 2018 for his own financial gain. But despite those claims, Lil Tay's current manager, Harry Tsang, told the Daily Beast Christopher Hope does not want any money from Lil Tay. And now Hollywood Life has confirmation of that from Mr. Hope himself. I spoke with Chris, who told me exclusively everyone else in this situation is motivated motivated by money and the possibility of making money off of my daughter. I'm not fighting about money. I am fighting for my daughter, for her happiness and her future. Chris spoke about Lil Tay's flexing videos and wild behavior, saying, when my daughter's social media began to go viral this year, I disagreed with most of the social media activity. I took legal steps to stop things which I felt were dangerous to physical and mental health and to her future. Chris Hope told us Lil Tay, whose real name is Claire Hope, is hurt and angry and he regrets that he was unable to to stop all the negative things from happening to her. And then eventually, after about 2019, we didn't hear too much from Little Tay. Her Instagram page basically lay dormant. Then, yesterday, August 9th of 2023, um, a message is posted on her page, and it goes viral. Everybody's reporting on it, TMZ, um, you know, mainstream outlets. And so they said this. It is with a heavy heart that we share this devastating news of our beloved Claire's Sudden and tragic passing, we have no words to express the unbearable loss and indescribable pain. This outcome was entirely unexpected and has left us all in shock. Her brother's passing adds an even more unimaginable death to, to our grief during this time of immense sorrow. We kindly ask for privacy as we grieve this overwhelming loss. As circumstances surrounding Claire and her brother's passing are still under investigation, Claire will forever remain in our hearts, her absence leaving an irreplaceable void that will only be felt by all who knew and loved her. Okay? So that is what was written yesterday. And I, like many people, I was shocked. I was heartbroken because, one, regardless of her past, she was a child, and she was a child being manipulated by people who were older than her. And so to find out that anybody is dead at the age of 14. So after my stream yesterday, I went to go see Oppenheimer, which we got to call this movie what it is. It should be called Boringheimer. I have never walked out of a movie ever in my life. We sat there for two hours. After two hours, I couldn't take it anymore. I refused to sit there another hour. We left. But that's a whole nother video. Oppenheimer is trash. Anyhow, I come home and I'm just like, upset like I cannot believe that the movie was just so bad and I log on to discord and I'm seeing messages on my phone because my phone had been on vibrate in the theater and I'm getting all these messages saying that they don't think Tay's dead this might be a hoax so I go on to discord I'm like what is going on like how did it go from her being dead to now you know nobody knows if she's dead so I guess people have reached out to the Vancouver Police Department and the Los Angeles Police Department because that's where either parent lives. And both police departments basically said that they're not investigating the death of little Tay. They said they have no record of her death. They have not been alerted of a death of any 14-year-old in the past, you know, few days. So that raised a lot of eyebrows. And then they ended up contacting her father and this is what her father had to say. Her father's name is Christopher Hope. 
and her former manager is Harry Tang, is Harry Tang. And so Insider contacted them, and they basically said that they couldn't confirm or deny rather the young rapper had died. They said the following, given the complexities of this current circumstance, of the current circumstances, I'm at a point where I cannot definitively confirm or dismiss the legitimacy of the statement issued by the family, Harry said. This situation calls for cautious consideration and respect for sensitivities involved. My commitment remains focused on delivering updates that are both reliable and appropriately timed. What the fuck kind of statement is that for a manager to release? What kind of statement is that for a father to co-sign? Little Tay is not 21, 22, 23 years old. Jason is not in his 30s. These are two minor children. How do you not have any idea if your minor child is dead or alive? Like, this is just insane to me. So now... We have an update today. This was what was going on yesterday evening. So now TMZ, they had initially deleted their original post, and this is what they're posting now. They're saying, little Tay, I'm not dead. Just let that sink in. We're happy that she's not dead because nobody wants to wish death on anyone, especially a child. But the fact that once again, another hoax, once again, another hoax. We just had the same thing with Carly. It's just too much. So let me go ahead and read, and read the statement here from Little Tay. So in a statement provided to TMZ, she tells TMZ, I want to make it clear that my brother and I are safe and alive, but I'm completely heartbroken, struggling to even find the right words to say. It's been a very traumatizing 24 hours. All day yesterday, I was bombarded with endless, heartbreaking, tearful phone calls from loved ones all the while trying to sort out this mess. She also says, my Instagram account was compromised by a third party and used to spread the jarring misinformation and rumors regarding me to the point that even my name was wrong. My legal name is Tay Tien, not Claire Hope. Tay thanks Meta for helping her get her Instagram account back and the phony death statement has been removed. What is unclear is why it took Tay 24 hours to get the word out that she was alive, especially because she says she was aware that her account was hacked and was getting phone calls about her death. On Wednesday, TMZ contacted police in Vancouver, as well as family members who were totally in the dark and knew nothing of her passing. Now we know why. So you guys just heard the statement from Tay. Um, I don't even believe that she was hacked. I believe that this whole family is just full of attention whores and they're doing anything to, you know, get back in the limelight because even if she was hacked and you know that you're hacked, just like TMZ is asking, why would you not get on social media? Why would you not contact TMZ? They obviously know her. They have, they used to literally stalk this little girl and wait for little sound bites from her. Why are you asking, bro? Well, I'm just, I'm you be, just you behind on your rent? <laughs> I am actually. So they could have easily contacted TMZ, like, please put this word out. I'm alive. I'm fine. Why, when the media contacted the father, the father couldn't confirm or deny? You don't know where your 14-year-old is. You don't know if they're at summer school, if they're, you know, working a summer job, if they're shopping. At, you just have no idea where your child is. You don't know if your child is dead or alive. This is sickening. And this is why, you know, I'm just, at this point, this is why everybody's going to be more skeptical when they hear news, when they hear stories. It's going to be to the point where people get so desensitized, they're not going to care. Because people are getting tired of their emotions being played with and their heartstrings being played with, only to find out that it's a hoax, it's a joke, oh, I had no idea, oh, I had a mental breakdown. It's just one thing after another with all these excuses. I find the situation really sick. And one thing you shouldn't play with is death. You know, there's nothing funny about it. There's nothing, you know, it's not a gag. It's not a hoax. But like I said, I'm glad she's safe. I'm glad she is alive. You know, we don't want to wish anything bad on a child. But you need to understand that you don't play like that. You don't play and say that, you know, you're dead, your brother's dead. I just don't believe that they were hacked. I just don't believe it. I believe that this family was behind this because ever since she's gotten on social media, everything about them has been a lie. Everything about them has been a facade. So to me, this is no different than what her mom was having her do, front like those were her apartments, those were her cars. This is just another ploy and another cry for attention. So I'm not buying anything. This whole family is trash. I'm glad she's okay. But with that being said, I leave the question up to you guys. How do y'all feel about this situation? Um, did you believe the initial story? Because I certainly did, because you don't think that people would play with death in this manner. 
especially with a child. Um, and how do you feel now that they're saying that she's alive and, you know, she's heartbroken and traumatized by the phone calls, but yet this heartbroken and traumatized girl, her mother and her father, chose to remain silent while they watched people on social media breaking down. And, you know, they were getting off on people posting these memorials of her and, oh, my gosh, rest in peace, little Tay, and, you know, people being real upset. I'm telling you, social media, attention is a new drug, and it's sad. But anyways, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like the video. Feel free to share it. Look forward to reading your comments. I will talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.